we're going to talk about three of the primary things that drive our programming timeline. First, compensatory acceleration. This is what we refer to as speed. If it's either 500 pounds or the bar, you're always moving as fast as you can. So it's one of our principles, which a lot of coaches don't necessarily buy into, but we know that speed is the opportunity for a smaller, less skilled athlete to stand a chance on the field. And if we look at freaking all of the New England Patriots wide receivers, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Next up here, we have accelerated adaptation. This means that we're gonna drive as much adaptation, strength, power, speed, these components that you see right here, in the shortest amount of time. From a collegiate perspective, you only get eight weeks, eight hours a week to work with your athletes. More often than not, coach, sport coaches wanna take that away for skill practice. So then you're left with two hours a week for eight weeks to prepare your athletes for the demand of a season. So no matter if I have two hours or eight hours a week, I need to drive as much strength, power, and speed as I can in that window. So that's gonna be a challenge for a strength and conditioning coach. And finally, we have the driving principle for all programming. This is called the SED principle. This stands for specific adaptation to impose demands. What that means is form follows function. If I apply a movement, barbell, with a set number of reps, Russians have already done the research for us, it's gonna drive a specific adaptation. So if I know my rep schemes, then I can program and build a program around the research and the science that is already laid out for us. So it's not just throwing paint on the wall and calling it art or a program. It's identifying science research and then applying that to drive a program. Specific adaptation and the imposed demands are gonna be what you see here. The barbell, the Olympic lifting, the sprints, everything you see on the programs, that's an imposed demand. And then the adaptations are, are set for us. So coaches need to understand those basic concepts. So now we get into the timeline. This is gonna be, say, we have 20 weeks. We have one semester with our athletes. This is how the phases should be broken down. So the first one to three weeks, you are focusing on building body awareness and then a mind-muscle connection. And there is a physiological phenomenon occurring here called intermuscular coordination, where muscles start to work together to move the joints. Think about my quads and my hamstrings working together to move my knees to get my hips over. I'm sure many of you have either had this experience or the gym, or trying to talk a person through a movement, and you're like, all right, so what I need you to do is get down in your deadlift, so bend your knees. No, 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 please bend your knees, right? So then they go into this, they finally get their knees bent, but they forgot that their arms are even overhead. So you're like, all right, no, put your arms down. So it's this lack of mind-muscle connection. You need reps, you need opportunity. So we don't want to overload. We don't want to put them in a position to get hurt because they don't have that just yet. Then you progress into the next four to six week area. This is where we're focusing on something called intramuscular coordination. So this is gonna be the power and the speed. So you have the movement patterns developed. Now we're gonna focus on enhancing your ability in those set movement patterns. So this breaks into three phases. The first is gonna be the number of motor units, the muscle fibers that are called upon. Then as you progress through that, it's gonna be the rate, how fast can they call upon to move the load, whatever that may be. And finally, you have the pattern. So this is where we have a consistency in power. This is where you do not know your own strength. Go back to Olympic lifting, right? You're working with that athlete, their first rep, it's not coordinated, it's not powerful, but they muscle it up essentially to that rack position. Then the second rep, you give them the exact same coaching cues as you did on the first, but then the second rep, it looks exactly the same, but all of a sudden, something connected, the power. It brings the bar above past the eyes, right? And then they catch it and you're like, oh my God, finally my athlete's got it. And then what's the third rep look like? The same dog shit from one. But the more opportunity you give them consistency, then they develop that power to the umpteenth degree that they need it for the demand. So we are creating a coordinated athlete. We're enhancing this athleticism bubble. So if I have a mind-muscle connection as an athlete and my coach tells me to do one, two, three things, guess what I'm able to do now? make those corrections, which makes me more valuable in practice, more valuable I am in practice, guess who he can trust on game day when it actually matters. So these are the phases, they're very important, right? Many people wanna jump into 1RMs right here. At a high school level, 1RMs don't need shit because athletes don't have coordination, mind-muscle connection. So we're gonna invest in developing that and gradually 
overload, but start in a smart way. Then we're gonna get into our, our muscle building phase, our hypertrophy. We have the movement pattern down. Our muscles can call upon the motor units, the patterns that they have. And now guess what? They're overload, so our body has to adapt. So then our muscles start to grow. It doesn't just start here with hypertrophy. So over the first few weeks, did we get 30 pounds stronger on our squat? No, we just got more coordinated. Over the first six weeks, did we get stronger on our squat? No, we just really got efficient with our movement. Now we're at a point where we're 60 pounds higher on our squat. We're gonna have to overload, we're gonna have to grow and construct some more muscle to move that weight. And finally, D, that's the goal. So if I have eight weeks, I need to consider all of these phases. If I have a whole year, I'm gonna to get to this point right here, the goal. I'm taking my sweet time developing and make sure my athlete is on point. And then I switch my focus. So where D, beginning of barbell, safest way for us to overload our athletes. We work our way through this six, 12 weeks. Then I'm gonna switch my attention. I'm still gonna be using the barbell, but now I'm gonna be focusing on power, developing power with the, the muscles that I have, with the intermuscular coordination that I got. Next phase, guess what we're gonna go into? We're not gonna stop Olympic lifting, but we're gonna be focusing on speed, movement, speed, speed of the squats, speed Olympic lifting, speed out on the turf. So different focuses here, guys, but depending on how much time you got, we're still applying accelerated adaptation. So these windows and attention to detail would shrink if I have less time. If I have four days a week, we can, we can accomplish a lot with these goals. If I got one day a week, I got to do as much as I can in that time window. These are extremely valuable if we talk about short windows, that eight weeks that I, I mentioned at the collegiate level. We're going to spend a lot of time getting coordinated, building as much armor as we can for our athletes, but at the same time, this is going to take them farther for the skill. Mental, best way for you to develop mental strength in an athlete is to put a heavy ass barbell on their back. We're going to identify who they are at the most, the maximum amount of stress that we can create in a weight room. When we talk about game day, nobody ever rises to the occasion. You fall to the level of your training. So if I know who you are at the safest, highest amount of stress that I can create in a training environment, guess what's going to appear on game day? Same athlete. So then we can target it and specifically prepare them for that demand as well. So depending on the situation, time you got, whole year, whole semester with an athlete, take this well thought out 20, 22 week approach. If you got eight weeks, really focus on inter-intramuscular coordination and still put a heavy ass barbell on their back.